in addition to OC3 being pushed up from next week to this Friday, we have King Protea buff. The adorable Kaiju is now hidden way harder just from a matter of changing what CEs she can actually use. And on it, like, honestly, she is just fundamentally like different as a character. Like this buff is far better than any MP buff could have actually been because an MP buff that would have been better than her current buff would have been like broken. It would have actually been a broken MP buff or it would have been extremely disappointing. So do we want a really good skill buff for a servant that doesn't need the MP buff or an MP buff that's probably just going to be lackluster? FGO has kind of been like stepping away from not even stepping away. They they are very reluctant to be buffing MPs if they don't have to. Just because it creates an issue where this one character's MP damage is so high that all the other competition looks weak. It's the whole reason Melison has not been getting love, but every other a lot of other servants are starting to reach that level of power. Like Summer Summer Chloe literally enables uh, servants that use 50% CEs to use Black Row. Party cost goes up, is what it is. King Protea is one of those servants that now uh, she can start from 50 as long as you have mana loading maxed out. And with Summer Chloe, she can do Black Row looping, which it, that's a lot for King Protea considering like what she is stacking especially because she can double stack what it is it's again this is a lot this is a character that when i really originally was talking about this buff like her uh or the last skill buff which was uh her monster strength why like i didn't even realize there was a cap for mp damage uh given enough time like uh, King Protea can easily hit the cap. And that's the key thing for King Protea. Give her enough time. This buff dramatically speeds her up, but only for from a farming perspective. And her solo capabilities? Ooh, it's nasty. It, it is so nasty. It uh, This buff fixed... King Protea's issues as a solo servant and now it, like she basically has to be going up against a pretender boss for me or berserker for me to really be concerned about her dying so let's get started first off base tech super high uh, at 12.8k almost 12.9 and there's even this note down here I'm gonna scroll all the way down and I only noticed this because I was uh, reading through her uh, dialogue before I recorded. Fourth highest attack of all servants along with Bazette. There aren't much higher. It's Jolter, Ibuki, and I think Ibuki again. Uh, it might... Yeah, Ibuki Doji is at least one of them. Uh, I don't remember the last, the other one. But she is up there with, like, stupidly high attack. And then she also has an attack buff to go with it. Also, the high, like, one of the highest attack buffs in the game. For its duration as well. Uh, yep. Costume stuff. This is from Lost Belt 7. Uh, and it shows up again in OC3. Another reason I'm not reading OC3, because it... King Protea in OC3 is directly tied to Lost Belt 7. Uh, yeah, HP here. It honestly doesn't matter what this was. It's your HP is never going to stay this low. It's never going to stay this low. Uh, MP charge. This could be better. But honestly, like King Protea as a solo servant is just going to get hit a lot and not take nearly enough damage for it to matter. Uh, so this MP charge, it's good, but you're probably not going to be focusing on it too much. 
and luckily for her that she's this tanky she also has a little bit extra uh defense mp gain so when she gets hit she gets more mp not like an avenger not that level of crazy but she is getting a good chunk more than if she was like a saber awesome this is actually up because this when i tried recording this it was not up yesterday okay. So this skill has been double buffed. And honestly, this was the only skill that they really could have buffed because infant or second skill cannot be buffed. It would cause too much issues balance wise if a skill like that actually was buffed and removed demerits. Although I haven't tested this with Alco, but this says demerit, so there's a chance Alco might actually be able to neg that. Um, I I don't have King Protea on JP, so I can't test that right now. But that would be interesting to test whether Alco can actually completely negate this effect, this part of the effect. In which case, yeah, they do not need to buff it. You just need to bring a different, uh, just bring a character to neg it. All right, so back to it. So originally, 3k HP per stack, and she'd gain each stack of growth every single turn, and they cap out at 10. 10 turn cooldown. So you would pop this skill and not worry about it unless it was a very sustained fight, much like the fight she released in for Seraph, where it was the common strategy was like, wait till turn 20, and then you start doing damage lit not you're not waiting that long but that's the same style of gameplay king protea wants to be sitting on the turn on the field for as long as possible she a gets super tanky and then b does big damage so this is the only how it released originally though it it got buffed a long time ago strengthening one this was yeah this was uh Four years ago for JP. So two years ago for NA. Uh, this was, uh, yeah. Sorry, don't know where I was going with that. Nope. Oh. All right. The buff gave her, it didn't change any of, well, how this functioned, but the HP was, went up from 3K to 4K. And she got MP damage resist of 8% per stack. So when she's fully ramped up, she has 50,000 HP and 80% MP damage resistance. That is wild. You are looking at like an actual CQ boss like that, just without the break bars. But that much like, yeah, the enemy is now treating King Protea like she's the CQ. But this wasn't enough, apparently. She still had a little bit of weakness. Uh, the main one being that if she got buff removed, like more than other servants, he's screwed. He is absolutely screwed, and it was why Inventile Regression was such a double-edged sword for her. Uh, this was on a 10 turn cooldown, so if something happened, you had to wait 10 turns. King Protea isn't able to stay alive that long if she doesn't even have the skill up. She couldn't like stack her HP to a crazy amount. So, most recent buff. They gave her a one-time buff removal that lasts 10 turns. And this buff removal, 100%. So 500% chance, not gonna happen. But you do not see 500% chance of buff removal like often, except like from break bars. Like I don't think any servant in the like that you can use actually has like unblockable buff removal because that really is just overkill. It also adds a 30 battery and probably the biggest biggest change is that they knocked the cooldown from 10 to 6 
they don't knock it down cooldowns that much that often like one of the except like another servant like that is jaguar warrior or taiga uh her skill was like super long and they reduced the cooldown and now it's like actually a good skill so this 30 battery is what lets her do farming the six turn cooldown is the reason she's even able to do black rail loop that's a lot i'm gonna spend a lot of time so let's start moving a little faster inventile regression cool skill cooldown reduced by one for everything uh including this skill for every stack of hp growth she will get a battery and then she loses all of this stuff and the buff removal resistance does not stop the removal this buff removal resistance does not stop her own skill from taking it now again this says demerit on it and alco her third skill uh protagonist correction stops any skill that has demerit on it from functioning in a negative way so if king protea actually is negging this he, it is actually really scary the amount of damage she's going to be able to output like really quickly like it is going to be very high burst damage uh when she's like fully ramped up not when she's like growing but there is a strong chance you might be able to just like mp back to back and still like not lose stacks like while using infantile re regression as well Third skill got buffed too. Was 40% attack for three turns on a five turn cooldown. That's not a that's not a bad skill at all. He can double stack this too. Like turn one and turn two. She gets to use this. Like nasty for buster farming. But that wasn't enough for them back then. Uh and this was when it mm, Right, and this was the moon salt. Right, okay, I'm getting my timeline right. Yeah, this was this released this year. So she's been on a buff every two years. Honestly, yeah, honestly, that that's better than a lot of servants. So that buff for each stack of growth, she gets 10% MP damage. So fully ramped up is 100% MP damage along with 40% attack. Um, that is probably the biggest damage steroid in the entire fucking game, barring Oberon's third skill. And that also scales based on how much MP damage you have. So it's either doesn't help at all, or it's either less or only slightly higher. You know, um, diminishing returns of too many buffs that are the same. Like if you already have a, sh a lot of buster buffs and but not that many MP damage buffs, Oberon's third skill isn't going to do that much. 100% MP damage here plus Black Rail. Uh, King Protea is like, what, 60 off from the cap? Yeah, 80 from Black Rail, uh, 100 from this, 30 from Oberon's skill. You're sitting at 210. Uh, the MP damage cap, I believe, is 550. So you are like 60% extra MP damage away from actually hitting the cap if you use Oberon's third skill. But if you du just double stack this skill, you already hit the cap. You well already hit the cap. So that's just something you kind of have to be aware with King Protea. If you're giving her Black Rail, uh, I'm gonna just have to keep that in mind that MP damage buffs are not gonna be that uh, beneficial for her. But she still has so many different type of buffs. Like the buffs you wanna focus on her, like probably power mods, just so her face cards do better and uh, crit buffs. Just, just to round out her kit. Passives, she has 11% buster, 8% crit damage from independent action, Territory creation EX. So the art cards, they're a little better than they look, but not too, too crazy. Uh, innate God Incessance. So debuff resistance, a little tickle from Divinity. And High Servant, 
right now, this doesn't do anything. But we have Hakuno coming into the game. And I don't even know if all their passives are showing. So for all we know, High Servant might actually get some kind of buff with Hakuno. Or this would actually do something. But we don't know yet. And it is what it is. Uh, pens. Mana loading is a must if you plan on using King Protea for farming. You need to have like your mana loading ready. <laughs> whether you're starting from 50 or whether you're Black Rail looping with Summer Chloe, King Protea needs this. From my understanding, you do not need um, Summer Chloe to have her bond CE, but you will need her for like a little bit extra battery. The question of do you need skill reloading? So do you need King Prote to have multiple appends unlocked besides mana loading? In my personal opinion, especially for King Protea as a solo servant, skill reloading isn't going to do much because now this is tied to a battery and in farming, you can't be popping battery skills too quickly. You need to spread them out a little better. Uh, yeah, and this is also not damage and this is, this can't stack. So you can't get two stacks per turn. Uh, so after when this comes back off cooldown, I think buff removal resistance might stack, but again, it also might not essentially you're just popping this for the battery. Unless you actually do pop inventile regression. And then the, like this is essentially on a four turn and then it gets reduced to a three turn. Like you're probably not popping this skill back to back. And then this skill also uh, reduce. It will go to a four turn. Whether you're uh, if you're doing double bitch like this is probably coming off cooldown anyway. Um, oh, but we'll double check this when I go, um, cause at the end I'll show the calc for her actual farming because I don't believe this is, it's actually up yet. But finally MP, uh, first effect, if she has growth stacks, she gets a 20% buster buff for one turn. So that means the turn she pops infantile regression, she's not gonna get a buster buff and her MP is gonna hit weaker, but it's only 20%. So if you're in a farming situation and like you MP, you don't kill, it's turn four, uh, it's not the worst idea to just pop infantile regression to have King Protea just like nuke it. Uh, it's not like this is like a 50% uh, buster buff with like, another attack buff in MP dead. It's not like you do so much more damage if you have it. It's just like, it's, you just shouldn't be popping infantile regression unless you need it. King Protea wants to stack up, let her stack up. Infantile is more, her HP is somehow super low and trying to heal 40,000 HP is not fun. That doesn't sound like fun, and it feels like it's just going to take longer. So infantile, you know, your HP bar goes back to normal, and then you just start stacking it back up again. And OC is also another buster buff. Like, she kind of needs an MP buff, but not really. Uh, it's clear, clear Lost World 7. You can get the Protea Ultra costumes. Uh, Matt's the level. If you are struggling with Dragon Fangs at this point in the game on JP, uh, you need to check yourself and you need to go do Storm Pods. You do not have an excuse now for why you can't farm this, considering the Storm Pod guarantees you get at least one Dragon Skill drop per Storm Pod. As long as you're just doing that Storm Pod 
three times every day, you shouldn't be running into too many issues. Is it gonna, are you going to be able to get everything done immediately? No, but you shouldn't be like me and waiting like six months because you got stuck on one mat and you really just don't want to farm it. Spirit Roots, though, I understand there isn't a good place to farm it. And Bonsi actually is pretty good. 20% Buster and another attack buff if she has the HP growth. It's not making up for Black Rail, but like... This is a really solid Bon CE. It, it just helps King Prodea do exactly what she normally would be doing. The, the demerit and the demerit is like whatever. Like, pick down is what it is. The card people hate the most is weaker when you use King Protea. So. Is, do I think King Protea is a must summon? Absolutely not. King Protea is probably one of the most controversial servants for how much like her gameplay will affect whether you want to even play her. She is a very, very slow to start servant. And yes, this buff makes her significantly faster for farming. But she's still a play style that a lot of people don't like to play people like to do min turns for cqs um and they try to just like clear the cq as fast as possible because just by facts the longer a cq runs the easier it is for you to just lose because of some random bullshit king protea's buff definitely helps stop her from suffering from bullshit but it's still a play style a lot of people just don't like to play now if you like this stall playstyle and then hitting like a truck because she definitely does hit like a truck then King Protea will be a servant for you so before uh I close out the video I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna show uh King Protea's farming along with checking with uh Laplace whether or not you can actually stop uh infantile regression from actually taking all her stacks all right, so as I went through the calcs, uh, I realized that for, and X and I showed it in this video, uh, for King Protea to actually be using Black Rail, you're gonna have to give up using uh, like uh, Invitile Regression. Like you're not gonna get the MP damage from King Protea's third skill, and you're also not gonna get the Buster buff from MP. So Black Rail looping, Yes, she can do it, but it's definitely not the type of gameplay she really wants to do. But we have this damage. This is against, uh, this is a Lost Belt 7 node uh, against Riders and I believe Assassin. So what she normally be like should be fighting. Damage isn't bad. 120,000 turn one, 180,000 turn two and 560,000 turn three. So even though she is losing out on that 20 buster and all the MP damage, it's not like she doesn't already have it to begin with. So realistically, she's only losing about 40% MP damage because she, um, she'd have the second, the third skill pop twice and you'd have two stacks of uh, growth and then the 20 buster. Uh, other than that, like King Protea, like this is decent damage. I'm not gonna lie, 561,000 damage. That is quite a lot higher than what she used to be uh, hitting. So yeah, King Protea, yeah, her damage pretty much just doubled by her literally bit uh, from Black Rail damage. So. Real quick, I'm just gonna load up again and do it with a 50. I shouldn't need King Pro, uh, Summer Chloe for it. And then we will see that damage. All right. So, as you can see here, 424,000 damage per. So, even starting from 50%, it's not such a huge difference in comparison to other units. Most other units have like a severe drop off from using black rail to not using black rail in Oberon. 
Um, yeah, I think like Arcturia would show it. Um, or she's not showing Super Scope Black Rail. But there usually is... No, even Artoria isn't the best example because, like, her buster farming... Yeah, her starting from 50 isn't that different from her starting... Oh, right, no, this is Mud Ray, not uh, actual Black Rail. Uh, trying to see if there's actually a good example for it. But, yeah, like, for buster units in particular, it's really hard... Okay, and it, mm, yeah, no, there are there aren't gonna be many good examples. Um like the best example we're gonna have is this King Protea farming, like right here. So last thing is just to see whether or not Alco's protagonist correction will actually affect King Protea. Like, will she actually lose her stacks? Okay. So unfortunately. Alco does not prevent growth from being taken away. Uh, I don't know why. So going back to here, usually if this demerit is here, Alco could stop it. Uh, so this 100% is being counted as it's a cost, like uh, Cuckoo Khan's, uh, how she has to base stars to unlock the super effects of her skills. This is coded as that, or maybe something a little different. It's not coded in the way to interact with Alco. So if the wiki could like take this off, that'd be like amazing. Cause that is a little confusing. Like in general, if you see demerit, Alco usually negs it, uh, but not this case. So I'm really liking this site. So I'm hoping to be using this a whole lot more. Um, Again, I'll, uh, yeah, and I'm going to read these off just in case like people can't actually see it uh, in the video. All right. So that is King Protea right now. I uh, hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys definitely on Thursday for OC3 part three. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.